Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 153 here on season number two. And today we are getting into how to calculate your year to date return. With each month I share, well, specifically with my, my recap videos, my year to date return. And I've been doing that pretty much since about February, March. The reason why I've been doing this is to be more transparent with you guys, the viewers, and then also so that way, if you want, you can benchmark your year to date return, or I guess more or less compare accounts and see if you're performing better than me or not performing as good as me. The reason why I'm making this video is because uh, I guess I kind of got like a, this sense that eventually I'll be asked, how do you calculate a year to date return? What's a year to date return? All, all that those kind of questions that come with that. So I figured I would at least start the process of making videos to talk about year to date return and why it's important, how you calculate it. So this is how you calculate your year to date return. On, on this sheet here, I've already calculated a few different year to date returns. Actually, I've calculated four. This is my, my year to date returns. Green is acorns, purple is stash, teal is stash retire and black is robin hood so these are all the returns right there the basically the formula to calculate your year to date return is going to be today's balance minus your account balance january 1st and then minus any additional deposits all divided by today's balance so what you're going to see on here is a few different things so what i've got set up for here my year to date is my June balance on Acorns minus my December balance, which ended December 31st, close of December 31st, open January 2nd. Uh, so that would be $2,000. So I got June minus December, and then also minus anything that I deposited in there, any roundups, any regular deposits, any additional deposits that I made, all are right here calculated. It comes out to $442. And then I do the math on all those, which is June minus December, December minus all the additional amount that I made and then you take all that and you divide that divide by basically the price in June and you get a year-to-date for me of 1.59 percent so we'll go ahead and, and break it down a little bit easier hopefully you guys can see that I'm gonna try to use a little bit bigger font so we'll go ahead and say you know what got an account that's uh, we'll say twenty thousand dollars on the close of opening of January Today it's June and your account now is worth, we'll say, uh, $30,000, right? So actually we gotta switch those numbers around real quick. Right now you have an account of today that's at $30,000. However, on January 1st, your account was only $20,000, right? And then we'll say that in, in order to get there, you've made, we'll say $50, we'll say $200 deposit each month. Well, it's been six months, so you figure you made an, an additional $12,000 in deposits. All right, then you divide all of that by the original $30,000 and you get a year to date of 29.33%. That's crazy, but it is true. If you wanted to see what that actually came out to again, you could just do that times this would give you basically you made $8,800 in profit it's how you calculate your year to date. it's pretty pretty simple really easy to do uh, I think it's more of a beginner thing that people don't know how to do it and so that's why I kind of wanted to bring it to your attention so that way you would know how to calculate your year to date you can also do this with your three year or your five year heck even your 10 year if you want to uh, just you're gonna have to need the correct numbers to calculate and then plug it into the formula and make things happen another idea on calculating year to year to date is maybe taking into consideration the dividends as actually deposits that go into that account so that way you can get solely basically growth on your account and not including those dividends that were reinvested the reason why i think it's important to first of all track your year to date is it kind of gives you like a good checkup health checkup on your actual account i mean maybe there's some stuff if you that you can change going into the second half of the year or maybe there's stuff that you did last year that maybe you can change going into the new year that might make you get a, a better return or a greater return. I mean, for me, I, I couldn't imagine like walking around thinking like my account's growing, my account's growing, my account keeps on growing. Like, look, I make deposits and it grows a little bit. I make deposits and it grows a little bit. And then calculating my year to date and being like, oh, 
oh, lost money. I'm down negative 4% year to date. Like that's not, that's not that good. Uh, and actually I opened my account in December. So really it's not that good. I'm not making money on this account. I'm actually losing money when I continue to put deposits in there. And then you can go ahead and make decisions like, hey, is this good long term? Like, should I be doing this? All that kind of stuff continues to come out of maybe having a, a little bit of a health checkup on your actual account by calculating that year to date return. And actually another reason that would be good to calculate your year to date return is that you can compare your account versus like other people's accounts. And then secondly, you can compare that account versus like ETFs that you're holding. For instance, if you hold like a, a, a S&P 500 ETF, you can compare that S&P 500 ETF to how your account is doing and see where they benchmark and see if your account's actually beating that. And if you are, then hey, not too shabby. So one of my concerns with new investors calculating their year to date return and then also comparing amongst each other or comparing to an ETF, just because it outperformed maybe your account last year, doesn't mean that it will outperform your account going into the future. Past performance never predicts future profits or future gains. So I think that it's important to not like completely like change up your entire account because hey, you know what? This year I didn't beat the S&P 500 and that's just terrible. And so I'm going to go ahead and sell all of my assets and move them over into real estate and because I'm done with it. Like, I don't think that you should be that dramatic with with an account that's that sounds to me uh pretty irrational in my opinion it might be a, a good idea to ch make some changes but maybe not major changes on your account maybe start with little changes i know for me specifically i would start with little changes and try to make adjustments maybe two percent or whatever to maybe set myself up for for better performance the next year i just don't see myself ever throwing out the baby the, I don't, <laughs> totally messed that up. I just don't ever see myself throwing out the baby with the bath water. Maybe it could just be that, that you keep on buying the wrong investments on the wrong days and uh, th there might be a, a better approach to like, a, a more fundamental approach to buying stocks at a certain points or making regular deposits and then buying stocks based upon a day or whatever it may be, maybe using dollar cost average. I mean, there's tons of research out there. I think honestly, the most important thing is to apply a strategy that works best for you and your personality. I mean, stuff that works for me is not going to work for everybody. And actually people that probably say opposite to what I say probably are doing pretty well off with investing as well. So th there's a bunch of different opinions out there. I think that the best strategy that fits you is the, what you can decide. So you need to do your own research to make that happen. I, I can't sit here and say my account will be great for you because it's my account. It works for me personally. My account will not probably work for you personally. So anyways, we'll go ahead and leave right there. Let's jump into the question of the day, which is what word do you always misspell? For me, <laughs> I don't know if I've addressed this question on here, but a word that I always misspell is tomorrow. I don't even actually know how to spell it. I just start typing it in and I hope that like Google populates it on my phone or I know that every single time I type it in on like a search engine or something like that, it always gets autocorrected or a document, essay or anything like that. Always and always I say always gets copy, not copyrighted, always gets uh, spell checked and I always have to change it because I, I honestly do not know where the R's and the O's and the W's go. Hey, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. <laughs> Dang, I'm on fire tonight. Oh man, lost it. Anyways, like I was saying, if you got any questions regarding Stash, Acorns, Robinhood, <laughs> anyone in finance, as well as general investing, business, Etsy, coaching, post those questions down below. Please don't forget to subscribe right up here and check out this video right here and check out my M1 Finance account has now been funded. And as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it.